everything I'm about to say, you already know it to be true. You are a slave. You are a slave to money, to social economics, to status, to politics, to ideology. You have sold your soul to have a place in a world order that you should naturally oppose. Okay, okay, here we go. Look, I just posted that video with the NBA players on the cover, to, you know, with the white wives and whatever, you know what I'm saying? The controversy behind that, you know, Dr. Umar Johnson and so forth. And Sister Juwan Buchanan, I'm assuming she's a female because it's a female uh, picture on her little avatar thing, on her little profile pic, right? It's, it's a cartoon, but it's a female. So I'm assuming Juwan Buchanan is a female. So Sister Juwan said something to me that made me think about something I said in that video that I need to correct. In that video, I said that Serena Williams is with that white boy that she's with because she just simply chose him, not because he was the best man, the best option she had out of the men that she was dealing with. That may not be true. I shouldn't have said that. You know, I really try not to say what I believe on my video channel, you know, on my channel. I try to always just say the facts. I always try to stay neutral and just give the facts. And on that one, I say what I honestly believe and I shouldn't have said what I honestly believe. Okay, I got that out the way. Now, let me explain something. My whole beef with this interracial thing is, it's the reasons why y'all say people date interracially that I have a problem with. You can't put people in your neat little box just so you can um, dismiss them and label them just so you can reject them and criticize them. It don't work that way, bro. And I don't know what world y'all live in, bro, but if y'all are black men that are repeating this, if y'all like Taz Goat Entertainment, this dude with this B1 silliness who talk about black men only give a white women because they want cave coochie. You must see, and I've seen Taz. And see, this is what I don't like. If you see the dude, he is ugly. Let's just be honest. And I don't like going there. But he, but see, dudes like him have no standing to criticize or, or to comment on why men who have options have options. Because the truth of the matter is, I am ugly now too, but I used to be a pretty boy. So I know both worlds. I know what it's like, man, when I was a little cute little boy, you know, and the girl be grabbing at me. I had racist. Every race of women equally coming at me. It didn't matter. I had as many white girls as I had black girls. I had as many Latinas as I had Mexicans. And I had a few Asians. I mean, it didn't matter whether I was in Chicago, whether I was in Wisconsin, whether I was in St. Louis, whether I was in, you know, uh, 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 small towns like Zion or Waukegan. It don't matter where I was at, man. I had the same response and reaction from women, regardless of race. So when I talk, I'm talking from that understanding. I know that this has, this has nothing to do with how much money you got, whether or not you famous, whether or not you see white girls in some kind of status. It has nothing to do with that because they choose. They come after us. And I understand that from that perspective. But is that to say that we don't have black men that want a white woman for that very reason that Sister Buchanan, Sister Juwan Buchanan, put in my comment section on that last video? Yes, Sister, you are 100% correct. Because the truth of the matter is they are a status in and of themselves. That's a part of social economics. White is the actual the top of the social economic pyramid. It is the highest under the social economic paradigm, white. So a lot of black men and black women do want white mates because they feel like that, that, that validates them. They feel like it solidifies them in some way. It feel like it, 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 it adds credentials to them in some kind of way. That is true. And we do have black men that are like that. We do have the Tate Diggs type brothers. We do have the, the, the uh, 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 Charles Barkley type brothers. You know what I'm saying? We do have these, you know? But we also, you also have a lot of black and black couples, black men, black women couples that hate black people. 
We also have a lot of black couples that have that, that suffer from just as much self hatred as are interracial couples, if not more, if not more, because at least a lot of times the 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 the, 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 the white spouse makes the black person feel like they are validated, as in a uh, 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 Clarence Thomas type case. I know y'all hate Clarence, but Clarence be holding it down the Supreme. I mean, his rulings be solid. Y'all just don't like what he said. He goes by the letter of law because he believes that he's above being just a black man because, you know, maybe because he's validated by his white wife. I don't know. Clarence Thomas is a letter of law man. You know what I'm saying? And that's because he feels like he can be that way because he ain't black. He ain't got to worry about your ideologies. He ain't got to worry about philosophies. He ain't got to worry about uh, 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 stuff like affirmative action. He's not concerned with these things. He is above that. You see, I got my white world over here. So, you know, you do have blacks like that. But you have just as many blacks that are married to other blacks that can't stand themselves. Let me tell you something. Y'all don't be hearing the self-hatred in a lot of these so-called pro-blacks. I do. Y'all don't hear how they view us. Every time I listen to somebody from the Nation of Islam talk, it makes me sick to my stomach. Stomach, because all I hear is black people ain't nothing, black people slow, black people stupid, black people behind, black people this, black people that, and the white man, you gotta study him. Oh man, he moves good. Oh man, that man there, yeah, he's masterful at what he do. You know, it's like praise for the white man and and and, and nothing but dismissing it towards the black person. You know what I'm saying? And this is the nation of Islam. Arguably one of the most pro-black organizations we have in the Americas. And they are full of self-hatred. Don't have a polite thing to say about black people. Everything about us is negative. Everything about the white man outside of the obvious charges of colonized, colonization, which they don't even properly say that because the nation would tell you that we came from Africa and we didn't. They still got you thinking that we were dragged over here. We wasn't. They got enough researchers in the Nation of Islam to know that's not true. They got enough people in the Nation of Islam that, that's educated to know that's not true. But they won't go against that paradigm because this is a part of what they do. So, you know, my thing is when I look at a lot of stuff is I look at the intentions behind the person. Right. I, I look at the character of the person. Right. And I listen to what people, not only what they say, but what they don't say. How they present stuff. That's why I don't like Jason Black. I don't care how pro-black he talk. That dude can't stand black people. That's why I don't like Dr. Claude Anderson. I don't care how pro-black he talk. He can't stand black people. Dr. Boyce Watkins straight out admitted that he wanted to be a white man at one time. He's around us by default. He don't want to be around black people. If he had his choice, he wouldn't even be dealing with y'all. So, I mean, it don't matter whether or not they married to white women or not. That don't matter. What you got to look at is, is the content of what they are saying, that the way they present themselves to the world, the words they choose to use, the way they talk about black people. Listen to how they talk to, behave towards, and deal with black people. The nation is confrontational with us. But see, the reason why we don't see it that way because we accept everything negative they say about us as being a fact. Now, this goes back to the interracial dating thing with Sister uh, Juwan Buchanan, Buchanan reminded me of. The problem I have with all of this is if you say that the only reason why these black men are with white women is because of some type of mental illness of, of left over from slavery or because they, they think that the white woman is, 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 is better and gives them more status, it falls flat on its face because that's just not true. It's just not true. You, I mean, it may be true for a few, but it just won't be true across the board. You will find out, as in Russell Wilson, Wilson's case, who was married to a white woman at first, divorced her, divorced her and married Sierra, all he was looking for was a woman on a, a black woman on a different level. He was gonna marry anyway. He just did. It's hard to the culture of our sisters is one in which most black men, as they grow, they can deal with. And I'm not saying all the sisters are ratchet. It's either ratchet or bougie, and neither one you can deal with. 
You know how many black clubs, upscale black clubs have closed in Dallas area because the environment is so stiff and dead because of the bougie black women in there that it just, it, it makes no sense to go. You charge these men $25, $30 at the door to go inside of a club where all the black women act like they're not even in there to talk to a black man. And, and how long does it take before the black men get tired of paying that kind of money to try to meet a sister that, that, that shows absolutely no interest? And it's not that they are adverse to the black men. They're not. They just don't know how to act anymore towards us. They have been duped so bad by this brainwashing to the point where they just don't know how to communicate with their brothers anymore. They don't know. They don't know. And there don't be no pookies in them clubs, O'Shea Duke Jackson. There don't be no Ray Rays in that club, Black Red Pill, Black Manosphere, Black MGTOW. This be all you so-called high value type brothers in there. All you brothers in there wearing blazers, blue jeans, and, and hard shoes. You know what I'm saying? Y'all type dudes. All you brothers in there with ties on. You know what I'm saying? So every time I go to these environments, I got a woman with me. I don't, I don't ever go alone, but my point is, you go in there and you see these brothers trying to get to the women and they can't. Women are just straight cold ignoring them because they have this pompous, bougie attitude towards their own. But then they go on social media and talk about how the black men are lame, the black men don't talk to them, black men. The truth is they don't like them kind of men, but they're being pressured to find them kind of men. And that's the reality of it. Women, the, the sisters are not allowed to like what they like. Now we going back to this whole thing about Serena and why I should not have said what I said. Maybe that is just what she liked. Even if she likes it for the wrong reasons, if, if, if the white is right for her, then that's her business. You know what I'm saying? I mean, she doesn't come out against black people in general. Like a lot of these men that get what white women do. A lot of these men that get what white women, they become antagonistic towards black people. They become adversarial towards black people. You know what I'm saying? And that is a problem. But it's not just a lot of these men that get what white women do it. A lot of these black women that got white men be like that. But that said, you gotta, you know, you have a right to like what you like, but our black women can't like what they like. So what happens is they can't like the kinds of black men they like because they get ridiculed for it. They get scorned for it. They get dragged through the mud by people like the Nation Islam, the Hebrew Israelites, the Moors, by Pan-Africanists, by, 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 by red, black red pill, by black Immor, by black MGTOW. They get dragged through the mud if they like a stronger type brother. Nobody supports that. It's odd, huh? It's odd. Nobody in the in, in the world of social media who have loud who have loud voices on platforms support that. They all think that the woman should have to get with a with a with a, with a square, but they don't like the square. So when they end up with a white boy, then they get charged for that. Then we get mad at them for that. But on our end, the other end. On the thug do end, what are we supposed to do if we got more white girls coming at us than anybody else? What are we supposed to do if we got more Mexicans coming at us than anybody else? Are we supposed to just ignore these women when these are the women choosing us? You can't live like that. You'll find yourself lonely. You can only date and marry the women that want to date and marry you. Now, I know I'm kind of all over the board here because this is a broad topic, right? It, it, it's kind of very convoluted. But the, 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 the point that I really want to make is that, yes, we do have black men that want white women for the sake of being white, some kind of status. You do have that. But to make them our default enemy is not fair. Because we have more black men that are more harmful to us as a race, as a community, that are married to black women like Dr. Umar Johnson. We have more of those type of black men that are more detrimental to us than we do black men that have tried to cross over and leave us alone. Listen, if a sellout cross over and leave us alone, he's no longer our concern. We shouldn't even worry about him no more. The problem we have is the enemy within. The problem we have are the black men and women sitting right here among us with white mindsets. We are ignoring that. And, and, and the reason why we ignore it because we can't see it because it's wrapped in the cloth of pro-blackness. It's wrapped 
in the language of pro-blackness. But you gotta judge a thing by its action, by its nature. You gotta look at how a thing moves and judge it based on that. You can't sit there and criticize black people all day and convince me that you love black people. This is the problem I have with the red pill, black red pill. This is the problem I have with Crimson Cure. This is the problem I have with all these black men channels like O'Shea Duke Jackson. You can't do these videos all day dumping and poo-pooing all over black people and convince me that you love black people. Look, but they had this brother man that used to go to my, used to live in my community years ago, right? And, um, you know, I live in an upscale, you know, multi-diverse, you know, uh, community, right? Very large community, very, you know, upscale. I mean, it's very nice back here, you know what I'm saying? Very, very nice. Uh, but this man was living in my community for a short period of time. I don't know, I don't know how they dip through and dip out, but it be like that sometime, you know? But anyway, see him at the community gym. And every time I seen him, it was he's an older brother, you know what I'm saying? A little bit older than me. Every time I seen him, it's like, man, our black children, man, the black boys, man, man, these black men, they be so bad, they be doing it. I mean, every time I the first few times, I kind of let it go, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, he talking about like the crime. Same thing O'Shea Duke Jackson does. Same thing uh uh uh, uh a lot of these black Manosphere Black Red Pill channels do, right? Just it's like, it's like he's following the internet for, for crimes committed by black men so he can come up and talk about it with somebody. And the first few times he did it, I kind of brushed it off and ignored it. You know, like, you know, okay, you know, I don't know what you're saying, but okay. By the third or fourth time, I got mad. I snapped there. I said, man, what is your problem with black people, bro? I mean, I ain't got no problem. But I said, man, but all you talk about is what we do, as if the white folks don't commit crime. Do you not know, and see here's the problem I have with y'all. Do you not know that most crime is committed by whites? And no, not because of no percentage thing, it's not comparable to the percentage. We are just targeted more. The reason why we get arrested more is because we are targeted more. And if y'all actually hung out around white people, you will see how calm they are in their environments. Drugs on the table. They don't hide it. We will be shaking like leaves in our environment with drugs sitting down the open because we don't know if we're going to get raided at any given time. They have no worries about police coming in their environments. They have no worries about what they do. They do illegal drugs out in the open. They have sex out right there in the club. I mean, I ain't talking about a sex club. I'm talking about just a regular nightclub. They'll be outside right there by the door. Man, white boy be hitting it up, you know what I'm saying? Right there in the corner of the club, you know what I'm saying? They on the couch. White boy hitting it up, you know what I'm saying? They don't care. Rules don't apply to them in their world. That, that's just the way they live. But when our reality is different, every rule and then some apply to us. So we walk around on eggshells, whereas they don't. We do that because we understand that we are actually watched. We are targeted. So when you look at these statistics, they don't tell the whole story, bro. That's the problem with these statistics. I just heard another video with Pearly, just Pearly things spitting out her fake statistics and the black woman on there was saying, you don't come at me with statistics. You know, I know people, I talk to people, I deal with people. And they tell everybody in the comment section, all of these red pill black men, oh man, she just hates statistics. She hates when the facts are on her side. Statistics lie. That's why they were created. They were created to deceive. They were created to misconstrue. They were created to confuse. Statistics lie. If you got something to say, say it straight. Don't give it to me. Uh, man is seven times more likely than a woman to do. Don't give it to me like that. If you got something to say, just say it. The problem with all this interracial stuff is this. You can't just label somebody a sellout just because a black man or woman has a white spouse. It's not that simple. You got to judge based off that person because like I said, we have a lot of black men that are married to black women and black women that are married to black men that hate themselves and black people. Can't stand themselves or black people. So. You got to look at what you're dealing with. It's not as simple as just putting somebody in a bucket. Oh, he got a white woman. He must. No, it's not that simple. And that's why I defended, you know, that's why I didn't really defend. I just say I don't see nothing wrong with the picture with the 
with these brothers in, in, on the basketball team. I don't believe that they got them white girls, man, just willy-nilly, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't believe that at all, you know? I would have to judge these men based on how they carry themselves, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I do know there are a lot of black men that are married to black women that I wouldn't trust as far as I can throw them. I do know there are a lot of black women that are married to black men that I wouldn't trust as far as I can throw them. And like I said, I named some of them. Roland Martin, Boyce Watkins, Claude Anderson, The Black Authority, Jason Black, the entire black Ray Pill, If Board, and MGTOW community. Most of the black Mc, uh, manosphere, most if not all black conservative, most if not all black Christians, the Nation of Islam, most if not all Nation of Islam members, most if not all Moors from the Moors Science Temple of America, most if not all Hebrew Israelites, most if not all Pan-Africanists, most if not all pro-blacks. Don't let these people fool you with this rhetoric or the language that they wrap themselves up in. What you are should be expressed in how you move. And, and let me end with this here. This is real talk. That sister that said that she's around white folks and white folks get comfortable saying things bad about black people because she was a sellout at one time. So she had to wake up out, out, out the matrix. Let me tell you a real story about me. I don't let white people say nothing bad about black people. And I don't let black people say nothing bad about black people. See, this is why I don't really, I don't have white friends. Yeah, I've dated and smashed a lot of white women, but I don't have white friends. Because the second they start talking that false history, we gonna clash. There was a, I was dealing with a white chick from Venezuela years ago. She considered herself white, you know, she's from Venezuela. And um, she wanted to, you know, she liked me, she wanted to introduce me to some of her friends because she wanted me, you know, she wanted to show me off or whatnot, you know? And um, yeah, I was still old, I was older back then. I was probably about 43, 44 back then. And um, my thing, I told her, said, no, I don't want to meet none of your white friends. You know what I'm saying? She's like, why? Because they going to like you, you know what I'm saying? You know, you cool, you know what I'm saying? It's not me I'm worried about. I don't want to meet, we going to clash. She said, me and you don't clash. Said, we don't clash because our relationship is different. You know what I'm saying? Our interaction is different. I said, but the second I sit down with these white boys and they go to talking about politics or society or history, we gonna have a problem because know what I don't do? I don't bite my tongue. That's what I don't do. I don't let nobody dump on my people in my presence. I will check that madness. Whether you black, white, Asian or whatever, it don't matter. I'm gonna check it. Even if what you say is true, I'm gonna tell you put some brakes on that. You gonna put a condom on that kind of, on that topic, bro. You gonna ease into that with, with caution. You know what I'm saying? You are not just gonna raw dog my people. Even if what you're saying is true, you're gonna say that a certain way. You're gonna watch how you say it. Because I know your heart. You that broken clock right now. It just so happened that you're right. You know what I'm saying? But right after you say that, you're gonna say something that's wrong. You're gonna go all the way three o'clock or nine o'clock on me. Soon as you say that, then you're gonna say something, you're gonna say something left, say something way right. You're gonna be all. So I correct that and I told this chick that I wasn't gonna be around the white boys like that because they not gonna really won't be my friend no way. And the feeling is mutual. And this coming from a dude that have dated and smashed a lot of white women. In fact, you are more than likely to see me with a white girl right now than a black woman. But am I a sellout? Do I suffer from some kind of self-hatred? Do I suffer from some kind of belief that the white girl gives me status? No, no. For me, it's a simple matter of who I can get along with the easiest. And that's the point I was really trying to make in that first video that I need to make clear in this one. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Till next time, I'm out of here, I'm Brother Kush, aka the Black Alpha. So long.